This is Jiba Fofi, a giant spider cryptid that is said to dwell deep within the Congolese forests. But is it real? This has to be one of the most asked questions throughout our social media, especially YouTube. To answer this question, we must delve deeper into what we know about the biggest spiders that are actually known to science. And no, those are not the Australian Huntsman spiders, nor New Zealand's cave spiders. That would be like comparing a giraffe to an elephant, being that the elephant in this case, the Terephosa genus, also known as the bird-hitting tarantulas, those are the real heavyweights of the arachnid world, at least today. Terephosa blondi is the biggest tarantula to have ever been discovered, measuring up to 28 centimeters in lifespan at most. Is it possible that there once lived a bigger species? We don't know. But so far, there is nothing that confirms it. Of course, in the Carboniferous period, there were giant arthropods of all sorts. So why not suppose that a very big prehistoric looking spider lived among them? We had a little smell of that, with the Megarachne, a spider said to be the size of a small dog. Oh, it's actually not a spider. That got us back to square one on the giant prehistoric spider matter. Jbafulfi reports put it at a meter and a half leg span. Even the spiderlings are already born quite big, probably bigger than the biggest tarantulas alive today. That's even bigger than the biggest Central African tarantulas, also known as the baboon tarantulas. The king baboon, Palinobius muticus, is probably the biggest in the continent, and it's also one of the few that produces a hissing sound by stridulating the chelicerae. And, as far as tarantulas go, it's one of the less friendly ones. The same goes for Hysterocratis gigas, native to the Cameroon. Although extremely common among tarantula keepers, it's also known as a reclusive and defensive species. But what if Jbafofi was actually a moderately big tarantula? Like a yet undiscovered but plausible species. This is what it would probably look like. Although science does support an arachnid size, it wouldn't look that different from what already exists. And we get that. Jbafofi is all about a truly gigantic spider species, not something that much plausible. Some explorer and native reports also mention portions of the rainforest totally covered in webs. Something like this may be plausible to some species of spiders that gather together and weave webs that cover entire trees. There are even tarantula species that web a lot. And guess what? Some of these are indeed found in Africa. But a meter and a half leg span tarantula weaving on top of entire trees? I just don't know about that. Heavy-bodied tarantulas tend to stay on the ground, burrowing or hunting, Although some species like the Poecilotaria ornata are indeed among the biggest in the world and are also arboreal. And what would a tarantula of these proportions hunt for? To answer this, we have to, once again, look at the biggest tarantula species. And although their diet consists of mostly insects, they can and will hunt birds, rats, lizards and snakes, if given the chance. So, it makes sense that the Jibafofi would hunt animals of its size. And this includes cats, dogs, antilope, big snakes, leopards, juvenile okapi, and of course, humans too. Also, each other, as virtually all spiders are cannibalistic. Although there's a species of African tarantula, and a very beautiful one, that is known to thrive communally. It's not the only one, but it's the one that presents better results when kept together. Other species may try this, but usually ends up with a very big and very fat specimen preying on all the smaller ones, that stayed small due to the lack of nutrition in the first place. Yes, they can be bullies. What about venom? After all, Jbafofi is said to be extremely venomous. A bite from it would immediately kill a human. Does this hold any truth? Well, tarantulas have venom. Most of them are really harmless though. The ones that aren't harmless are indeed situated in Africa and also Asia. So yes, a medically significant bite would be probable. The question is, would they really need the venom? Well, it depends. Just take a look at yourself. Do you have claws, pointy teeth, armored skin, bear-like strength? No? Well, then a bite from the Jbafofi would probably kill you, even without the venom. 20 or 30 centimeter long fangs biting down in a vulnerable area would kill almost immediately by blunt force alone. But yes, having venom could make the Jbafofi hunt in similar fashion to Komodo dragons. Biting a leg on a big animal and then wait out the effect. Then eat it when it already died. That is actually a very interesting theory for a giant spider. Talking about spiders and venom, yes, there are spider species that pose a bigger threat to us than any tarantula. But ultimately, we pose a bigger threat to them, 100% of the time. This misconception... Uh
This misconception is what supposedly caused Congolese tribesmen to hunt down the Jbafofi and apparently extinguished them. It's said the giant arachnid was once very common in the rainforests and swamps, but became endangered due to the natives burning their nests. That's an extremely plausible theory for any animal becoming extinct. Anyway, spiders are not the real pests. We are. They have lived for over 300 million years and became one of the most successful predators ever to have lived. And they will surely remain here long after we're gone. A world devoid of arachnids is a world totally inhospitable for us and other species alike. In conclusion, Jbafofi may be among the more plausible cryptids and may even have existed until recently, but may also have been different from what we picture it to be. Only time and humans stepping in places they shouldn't will reveal this to us. Until then, don't forget to like, subscribe and activate the bell icon to keep updated on the Jbafofi and all the other Congolese cryptids. Until next time.